Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ray. Now, dry fasting can be really intimidating. Many of us still hold on to a belief that it is impossible to go without food and water for more than three days, like a lot of scientific research supports. But I can tell you from my personal experience and my experience guiding thousands of different people around the world in a group dry fast scenario, that this fact is not true. All of my students and myself went through more than three days. My personal record was 10 days and I know personally of people that have done 15 days, 20 days and a little bit further than that, even though I wouldn't recommend going that far. And in this video, I'm going to tell you my insights on how to properly dry fast by breaking it into four different stages. First stage is the introduction to dry fasting, then the preparation before the fast, the actual fast and breaking the fast properly. So dry fasting can be profoundly beneficial. I've healed my body on so many different levels through dry fasting and have never again get sick. And I assume it has to do with this type of lifestyle that adapting a lot of fasting to your life. I've also been witness to what most would consider a bunch of miracles through controlled dry fasting in my group. People that didn't need their glasses right after the retreat. People that healed old injuries and old traumas. People that started getting more downloads and deeper meditations just because of dry fasting, just because of the detox itself. So people started channeling and, and getting more and more information. So it's not only about the physical body, but it is way beyond. It's about cleaning our ener energy, it's about cleaning our emotions, and it's about a spiritual experience. So there's a lot of different transformations that can happen through a dry fast, and that's why I really like sharing this type of stuff, especially about how to properly dry fast, unlike a lot of people do. So, so stage one, the introduction. What is a dry fast? Most of you already are familiar with the fact that dry fasting is to go without food and without water for a specific period of time. It could be 24 hours, it could be 48 hours. Most people try to do it in, in whole day numbers because it's just easier to follow through, it's easier to remember when I started and when I should stop. An intermittent fast is a very short but daily dry fast. So people use intermittent fasting as a lifestyle. It's considered to be the easiest dry fast because what happens is that you actually eat every day, but you hardly get to the detox symptoms, which happen, begin happening after a day, two days, three days. The disadvantage of that is that you don't, don't go through a deeper cleansing uh, that a several day dry fast can bring you, and it's not a profound deeper experience, which can be even spiritual on some level. A dry fast can be a hard dry fast or a soft dry fast. Differences being that in the hardcore, there's no showers, there's no brushing your teeth, there's no touching water in any way. So it's really important that if you're going to dry fast, you better do it properly. And try to think about it as a new relationship you will have once you start fasting and not just a one night stand. So you're beginning to create a new lifestyle that is incorporated with many, many dry fasts. Meaning that even if this is just once or your first time, you have to think about your next time. And you have to consider this time as the preparation for the next time. That's why this is going to help you to motivate you because you're, you're going to see the benefits over time and not just one time. Because usually if you do it only one time, you kind of get the bad symptoms and then you create a resistance. So you should consider going through a process that is both physical cleansing, mentally strengthening and spiritually awakening because if you take it as a lifestyle that's what you're going to get it's not just a one night stand so that also means that you have to get the right preparation for your fast and if this is the first time you dry fast you probably want to go for one day preparation and maybe one day of dry fast now a proper preparation can be to eat only raw food for a time that is equal to about half of the length of the fast if you want to prepare even more, you can go on before the fast, just on juice or just on water alternatively, okay? That means, for example, that if you want to go three days dry, I would probably ask you to prepare for about a day and a half on raw food or juice or water or anything like that, just to prepare the body so it will be an easier transition. 
For a 24-hour dry fast, you probably don't need much preparation, but it will help you if you don't eat anything heavy just before the fast, okay? 24 hours is actually considered quite short, but for beginners, it's perfect just to get a taste of it. For example, during my retreats in the preparation stage, we ask people to have a raw food diet for about a week before they come. A lot of people cheat one time, two times, because after the retreat, usually they go for about another month, month and a half on just juices, so they know that they're going to stop eating for a while. But that's okay to cheat, as long as you're, you know, the 90% of the time you are doing it in the right way. This is, by the way, a really good lesson for life as well, you know. You have to blow your tire up, but you have to let a little bit of air loose. So 90% health, 10% sins, enjoying life, not thinking about it too much. So one week of, of preparation as a raw food, then the first day that we're all together, we're eating one day of fruit, then one day of juice, then one day of water, and then we go for a minimum of four days of dry fasting, okay? That's the best way of doing it. During that time, we're separated from society. In other words, there's no cell phones, they're just us. We're doing breathing exercises, meditations. So it's quite easy. And this is the first thing I tell most of the participants in the first day. This is going to be easier than what you think here when we have the group energy and you have the guidance and the team and everything. It's gonna be harder when you go back home when you have to integrate. So that's the preparation for something like four days of dry fasting. And if you wanna go even longer, this is a good preparation even for that because about a third of the participants decide that they do want to go longer. So again, you want to slowly decrease heavy foods and then you want to go on fruits and then you want to go on juice and then water and again this is just for a longer fast more than three days of dry fasting second phase the actual fast so here are some of the points that i can give you about doing the fast in the proper way first environment environment means supporting environment if you're going to do it at home you have to make sure that the family knows your spouse is supporting of it you have to understand your weaknesses as well you have to understand that during that time you might have to cook for your children you might have to, I don't know, have a business meeting. So you have to prepare yourself both personally and business-wise. So take a period of time. Sometimes it's just a very long weekend. Some people decide to just go on their own, find a place, rent a, rent a hotel room, and just be three days outside of everything that you know. And again, this is not for those 24, 48-hour dry fasting. These are for a deeper, profound process if you want to do it with yourself. That's why most people prefer to do it in a group. Second thing is physical activity. If it's the first time that you're fasting and you're in a good shape, and in good shape, you know, I'm talking about the different parameters that create the person. If he's in good shape before, if, if you know, you've, you've taken the body of your parents, DNA-wise, if you're eating healthy, all of these things are variables that will tell you if the fast is going to be easy or not. As a rule of thumb, what I see is uh, the younger you are, it's easier. The more in shape you are, meaning people who practice yoga, people who go to the gym or run or anything like that, the physical body is making it much easier for them, especially for the physical symptoms. Next is to know your weaknesses. You know, know the challenges, know your comfort zones, know what you tell yourself or the mind game that you're playing when you're starting to fast and the little, you know, the little ego that says that I want to be in my comfort zone. And I made a whole video about that called how to overcome difficulties while I'm fasting. If you want to fast and you want to take it to a deeper level, consider meditating or just uh, observing yourself objectively. You can choose to work, not work. You can choose to go to the gym, not gym. You can choose to just go out for a nice long hike in nature. Also consider that you are going to feel a lot of detox, detox symptoms like uh, faster heart rate, uh, lower blood pressure, uh, weakness. This usually happens to most people that are beginners, but accept the fact that they're going to come. If you properly prepare, they won't. Phase three, breaking the fast. If it's a long fast, you must first break it with water. Do not eat food directly after your fast, especially if you have gone over two days of dry fasting. You might feel awful afterwards. You don't, don't give in to that temptation. Don't think because it's your spiritual ego that is telling me. Trust me, you don't want to learn that lesson the hard way. You're going to throw up. You're going to feel really bad and grounded. The best way to break a fast is to go for water for a few hours, then juice, then a couple of fruits, okay? You have to wait in between those different stages before you go to cooked solids or anything like that. The longer the fast, the bigger and the longer the duration between these different stages. Also, when you drink water, please supercharge your water with your positive intentions or use one of the methods I've talked about in one of my other videos, how to supercharge your water. 
So the first water is actually going to replace the ancient water that your body has just used. Be careful not to drink too much water because again, it will ground you quite quickly. The best, especially for longer dry fast, is to keep a regular sized glass every about half an hour, up to two hours. So four glasses every half an hour, one glass. In my retreats, how we choose to break the fast is that everybody comes around to a water ceremony. After four days, everybody's kind of like itchy about water. Even though they've showered and even though it's a soft, dry fast and they could be in the pool and everything, everybody's kind of talking about it. The energy is building up. So we're doing a whole ceremony. Everybody's sitting around and there's water vases in the middle and it's water that we have blessed ourselves. Each one goes in his own time and blesses the water. So the water actually retains the energy of the group. In other words, your intention, your beliefs about what the water actually change the structure of the water. And this again has been proven on many, many different, uh, in, you can see it in different researches online. You probably already feel it and understand that water is a little bit different than just another element. And right after that, I tell them for again, two hours, every half an hour, half a cup, and then a whole day just on water, because what happens is that you're losing all the deep water in your system, and with that comes out traumas, and with that the body cleanses itself of old, old belief systems. And that's why a lot of people go through some sort of emotional or spiritual cleanse. And then the day after, we do go for diluted juices. So it's 50% water, 50% diluted juice, or 50% juice, which creates a diluted juice, and a day after, just juice. Then, because it's my retreats, we go on for about a month after the retreat for those who want to continue to become a breatharian. Uh, they want to go for over about a month and a half, for about six weeks, gradually introducing more and more, um, you can say, taste and flavor. In the beginning, just fruit juice, and then after a couple of weeks, they can have a soup. And then when they see that they're not dependent on it anymore, they can each choose whatever they want. But the safest way to go out of the dry fast, like I said, is water and then some time, and then dilute the juice, some time, juice, and then when you feel ready, gradually, with respect and honor to your body, you can go on fruits or anything that is beyond that, stronger than that. Uh, some people make the mistake of eating something very heavy. It doesn't look good, trust me, I have a lot of experience in this. I've seen, I've seen everything pretty much. So much that one time we had to get an ambulance for someone that thought that everything's gonna be fine and it just went for meat right after a four day dry fast and it didn't look good. Now. If you're really serious about dry fasting and you want to go for five days or longer, here's what I recommend. I already told you what we do in my retreats, which is approximately the same. Make sure that you don't go directly for five days, but you build up at least two previous experiences. So again, raw food for a week, one day fruits, one day juice, one day water, and then five days. Learn how to do Falun Dafa exercises, which is something that goes hand in hand with retrieval of pranic energy. And what, this is what I teach new breatharians as well. So it's sort of like Tai Chi and it brings energy to the body. It's called Falun Dafa. This is more than just a fast, okay? More than five days is actually a spiritual journey. So disconnect from the world, bring a novel, read books, take time off work. Things will come up in your personal development and, and past traumas that needs to be dealt with. Allow them to be. This is a part of the process when you're dry fasting for so long. If you have any experience or suggestions on dry fasting, please leave them in the comment section below so that other people may enjoy your knowledge and your experience as much as they enjoy mine. And if you're interested in joining one of my group dry fasts, this can be a really great way to get your motivation and support that you probably need to complete the dry fast. I host them all over the world. Check them out on raymore.com. So thank you very much for watching me and giving me your amazing time. Namaste my friends and I will see you in my next video.